What's up, chemistry class? We're going to do some gas stoichiometry notes, which is really kind of wrapping up uh, our gases unit. We've looked at uh, some three major gas laws, Charles, Boyle, and guy Lusso. And then we've also looked at a little bit of ideal gas law. Now we're going to combine this with our previous units, previous stuff with stoichiometry. So where we converted grams into moles, moles into moles, moles into grams, we can actually convert liters of certain quantities into moles, which ties it all in on one big part. So with that, let's look at the first bit what we have here. Now this is called the stoichiometry roadmap or diagram. Um, I really like this picture because it simply puts in all of the stuff we know about mole to mole conversions, or at least for this class. So I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit here. And this picture is absolutely helpful to learn. Let me actually zoom out just a little bit and move this so you can see it in frame. Okay. Now, this allows us to convert moles of any known substance A. So if I, if I uh, start here with mass, if I have grams of A, I can get to particles of B. Or if we want to look at grams to gram stoichiometry, kind of like what we did last unit, you know, we can do that before. Let's talk about this roadmap just a little bit more in depth. What do we know about our mole to mole conversions? Well, this part comes from the balanced chemical reaction. This has to do with your mole to mole numbers on a balanced chemical reaction. What else do we remember? Well, if we look at mole to grams going either direction here, that we would be using our periodic table and finding the molar mass. So how many grams it is for one mole of a substance. Pretty straightforward. There's one new thing, I guess not a new thing. Uh, I'll take a step back. Let's talk about moles. Moles in Avogadro's number is that, you know, one mole of a substance, just in case you can't see it, in the picture is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of those things. So we can say atoms, molecules, depending on what you're dealing with, so on and so forth. There is going to be a brand new thing here, which we kind of talked about in our last notes, but let's bring it up again. It going back and forth from the mole to liters of a gas or vice versa. So at STP, and this is already in our notes, at STP only one mole of an ideal gas is 22.4 liters. And that's only at standard temperature and pressure. So with that kind of being said, we can look at converting grams of a substance. So let's say the hydrolysis of water, which we did, we can then predict how much we actually used if we were to take some measurements in the lab. So let's do that. Let's go from grams of A to volume of B. So if we're gonna look at that back of that roadmap, we're gonna go from grams of A, so that's mass of A, to volume of B. So we're gonna need a couple things. We're gonna need a balanced chemical, or we need a periodic table, balanced chemical reaction, and we're gonna need this number here soon. So we're gonna use all three of those to find this solution. Okay, let's try it out. What volume of carbon dioxide is produced at STP by the decomposition of 1.15 grams of calcium carbonate? This is the equation below. It's already balanced, sweet. So here's what we know. We know our mass is 0.15 grams, but we need to convert that into moles because we can't do anything going straight from grams to volume, so we have to go grams to moles. So let's start off with 0.15 grams of calcium carbonate. And I'm doing a little bit of math already. Uh, we have 100 grams of CaCO3 is one mole of CaCO3. Now you should be a pro at finding molar mass. That number I didn't pull out of thin air. I found calcium carbonate, added up all the molar masses, and there's where we got from there. 
And this gives us how many moles we have. But remember, we want to go to liters. So we're not quite done yet. We can go from grams to moles. Moles of calcium carbonate to moles. Uh, what are we looking for again? We're looking for carbon dioxide, CO2. CO2. Let's write that a little bit clearly. CO2. We're not quite done here yet. We still need to continue on just a little bit. So let me move over a hair. Now let's finish this problem out. We know since we are at standard temperature and pressure, one mole of CO2 is 22.4 liters of CO2. That's it. We're done. Let's do the math. So I'm going to do 0.15 divided by 100 times 22.4. And I get 0 0.15. 034, actually let's, let's do 0 0.0336 liters. So if we were to round that to, you know, 0 0.034, or we could say 33.6 milliliters. This is how much gas we produced. Boom, that's it. So that's tying in the stoichiometry you've done before in with gas stoichiometry. And the only real new player to the whole game is this part right here. But remember, that is only at STP. If it's something other than STP, we have to use the ideal gas law formula. Speaking of which, that's what we're going to have to do here. So what I want you to do first is pause the video Try this problem out on your own. There's two tricky spots here. One, we're not at STP. And two, check your units. I want to see if you can catch it. Pause the video, try it out for a couple minutes, and then see if you can figure it out. Okay. If you got, just look at my notes here real quick, 52.34 liters on your own. Nailed it. You don't need it. You don't. You just skip ahead in the video and do the problem number three. If you didn't, let's figure out. Let's kind of go step by step together. So the first thing is we have to convert Celsius into Kelvin. So remember, Kel, uh, actually, let's write that correctly. Celsius equals K minus two seventy three. If we plug in twenty two degrees for Celsius, we get our temperature to be. I'm gonna write that in here. Our temperature is actually. 295 Kelvin. What else do we know? We know our pressure is 0 0.745 atmosphere. We're looking for volume. We don't have number of moles. And we do know the R constant. Gas is 0 0.0821 liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin. Well, what do we know here? What we don't know is how many moles we're going to produce, but we do how many grams of a starting a substance we have. So what we're going to do is let's draw a little roadmap. We're going to go from take our 105 grams of sulfuric acid. So it's H2SO4. We're going to convert that into moles of H2SO4. Then convert that into moles of oxygen. And then lastly, and not least, we can then finally use uh, our ideal gas law formula to find the volume of oxygen. So we got stoichiometry right here. And right here, we're going to use our periodic table of elements for that part. That's grams to moles, right? Moles to moles is the balanced chemical reaction. 
And then we're going to use the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT, to find volume. Let's slide that down a little bit. Let's get rolling. So what do we got? We started off with, let's do a different color, blue. We have 105 grams of sulfuric acid. And our molar mass for one mole of H2SO4. We have 98 grams H2SO4. Remember, we used our periodic table to figure out that step. And then mole to mole conversion. For every two moles of H2SO4, we used three moles of oxygen. Now, remember, since I'm not at STP, I can't actually use that last step. I can't. We can't say one mole, 22 more. We can't do it because we're not at STP. But we can find their number of moles, which is going to be 1.61 moles of oxygen. Running a little bit out of space there. But let's go back over here. Since we know our now our number of moles is 1.61, let's now plug into our ideal gas law formula. Let's do red for that. PV equals nRT. Pressure is 0 0.745. And you're going to notice this looks very familiar to what we did last year or last week. Because I'm actually not going to plug in my numbers yet. Let's get volume by itself first. Let's do it like we taught in class. Get volume by itself. Now we plug in our numbers. 1.61, 0 0.0821. Temperature is 295. All over 0 0.745. And we get our final answer of 52.34 liters of oxygen. Cool. That's it. That's gas stoichiometry. There's no like, this is always the way to do it. You kind of got to put your brain on, on how to solve a problem. And drawing this little roadmap right here is absolutely and can be helpful on trying to figure out what you need to do. So here's what I want you to do. This is a step up. But you need to write the chemical reaction, balance the chemical reaction, and then if you start off with one liter of carbon monoxide, how many liters of oxygen are you going to need, and then how many liters of carbon dioxide are produced. So go ahead and hit pause on the video, try it out, come back in a few minutes. Actually, let's get the answers for you. If you get the answer, then you're solid, you're good to go. Um, 0 0.5 liters of O2 and 1 liter of CO2. If you got those two answers on your own, looking pretty swag. But if you didn't, let's just do it. First thing we do is write the chemical reaction. So carbon monoxide, which is CO, reacts with oxygen, which is O2, to produce CO2. Okay. I had to pause the video. I realized my baby's crying in the background. Anyways, all right. Where was that? Oh, right, now we go. There we go. We got our chemical reaction. We balanced it. We predicted it. Now we got to balance it. And a little bit of balancing magic would say, well, we're going to put a two here. And put a two here. Two, one, two. Okay. Sweet. Let's do it now. All right. We start off with one liter of carbon monoxide. And what do we know? We know for every one, 22.4 liters of carbon monoxide. That got a little ugly. Let's write that a little bit better. For every 22.4 liters of 
carbon monoxide, we have one mole carbon monoxide. Then we do our mole to mole conversions. For every two moles of carbon monoxide, we're going to use up one mole of oxygen. And then for every one mole of oxygen, we're going to use 22.4 liters of oxygen. Why can we use that number? Well, we are at STP. Since we're STP, we can use the magic number of 22.4 liters of an ideal gas is one mole of it. Doing your quick math, what do we notice? We know you see one divided by two, so you get the answer of 0 0.5 liters. All right, last one, last bit here. Notice that the beginning part is going to be the same. 22.4 liters of CO, one mole of CO, two moles of CO, and now we're going to carbon dioxide, so that's two moles CO2. One mole of CO2 for every two moles of, oh, 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 22.4. 22.4 liters CO2. Everything cancels out, and so you just get the magical answer of one. Okay, here's what I want you to try out now. Try these problems out on your own. You got wrap up number or warm up question number one, warm up question number two. I want you to try these out on your own and see if you get the correct answer. Um, for the first one, you should get 37.5 liters of acetylene gas. 37.5 liters of water. And 93.75 liters of oxygen. Okay. And then for the last one, but surely not least, you should get 0 0.15 liters of CO2 and 0 0.3 liters of SO2. Sweet. You guys are awesome. Stay awesome. I will see you in class hopefully soon. Take care. That's it.